An Arctic blast, snow for the south, nor'easters, who knows, but it all looks to be on the table, at least for the second half of January. It's January 7th, 2026, and we have a lot to talk about today. The pattern ahead looks active. First, we're going to start off with talking about our snowstorms through the plains, Midwest, that are just a couple days away, and that severe weather it's going to promote down through portions of the southern plains, Dixie Alley, maybe out towards the Ohio Valley. We're also going to talk about, as I said, the chance for some snow potentially in the south. We see a big nor'easter showing up on the GFS. We see southern snow on the euro still pretty far out but i like the model trends i like what the ensembles are doing and i like the probability of this very cold freezing air reaching down into the gulf where we may have a lot of moisture available in the second half of january we're also going to get into our temperature anomalies like i said we could see some very very cold temperatures in the second half of january and i'm not talking about january cold it's always cold in january i'm talking about well below average temperatures for the second half of january and we're going to get into the details of this severe weather that we could see thursday to saturday as always i appreciate you guys joining me don't don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell if you like this type of content and of course if you like the video like the video let's get into the weather all right before we get into all the fun stuff and believe me there's a lot of fun stuff to talk about today the models are being very generous to a lot of people with cold air with snow with a very wintry pattern second half of january you know i like to look at our live radar first talk about what's going on across the states we've got some snow falling up here through portions of idaho montana a little bit of snow in the high elevations in the pnw as well and some moisture moving into the south here this is going to enhance as we move throughout the day and into tomorrow we're going to have a storm system moving into the southwest this is what's also going to potentially bring snow through portions of the plains and into the midwest of course we also have this system moving through new england some snow some ice some rain not expecting any major snow totals any major ice but it's definitely going to make roads a little bit slick a little bit of a mess today i'm sure some people are enjoying the snow though back up in new england all right let's get into the latest euro and then we're going to look at the latest gfs as well this is our zero zero z euro run from last night you can see that storm system moving through new england pushing off the coast and then you can see this moisture down in the southwest as i said we're likely to see more and more of this precipitation move into the southwest as we move throughout the day and into tomorrow some more snow moving into the pacific northwest now this is getting into tomorrow Tomorrow, pretty warm out here in the southeast and really just out east in general don't worry this is not going to stick around forever we have some more cool air moving in you can see as we get into thursday as we get into friday we get this storm system moving up through the plains there's a possibility for some severe weather down here in the southern plains and then that severe weather threat is going to transfer a little bit off to the east on friday towards dixie alley in the ohio valley and we're going to get into the details of this severe weather a little bit later in the video now of course we could also see some snow a little bit of snow through portions of the central plains up towards the upper midwest as we move through thursday and friday not seeing a ton with this first storm system the second one could bring a little bit more. And you can see as we're getting into Thursday, Friday, some good snow falling in the central to southern Rocky. So some good snowpack there. As we push throughout Friday, our trough is going to begin to try to tilt and move off to the east. This is when we could get a nice little snowstorm developing along this Bear Clinic boundary here. You can see a lot of moisture still streaming up from the southern plains through the Ohio Valley up towards the northeast. And then we push through Friday into Saturday. We get some of that snow moving up potentially through portions of Kansas, Missouri, Iowa. Maybe we get some snow into northern Illinois, Chicago, Wisconsin. And then we get some cold air wrapping in some snow snow on the back end as well here now the models aren't showing a ton of snow with either of these systems but a lot of people could see a little bit of snow if you know what i mean i don't think anyone's going to see a lot a lot of people could see a little if anyone does see good snow wisconsin michigan especially michigan on the latest european run looks like maybe you overperform here all right pushing into sunday we got some cooler air moving into the east we're drying up out west you can see we have a nice ridge out here getting into early next week monday and tuesday we still have some cold air pushing into the east we're still dry and warm out west you can see another clipper system trying to move across the great lakes here out towards the east coast and here we go we have a nice trough digging pretty far south you can see our 540 line trying to scrape up against the gulf this is our freezing line so this is freezing air trying to scrape up against the gulf small chance maybe for some flakes to fly in the south i don't think we're gonna have a snowstorm in the south with this system but we're gonna talk about a chance a little bit past this in a second what we could see here though what i think there's a small possibility of is you've got cold air pushing out towards the coast You've got a lot of moisture riding up the East Coast as well. Still think there's a small chance here that we do get a storm system linking in with this cold air. And maybe, just maybe, we get a little bit of mid-Atlantic, New England coastal snow. Not showing up on the models right now. Not going to be surprised if we don't. But there is a window here. So we'll continue to watch this time frame. The GFS actually gives us a better shot there. Again, though, lots of cold air diving south. Lots of moisture riding up the coast. We'll see what happens as we get into the middle of next week. Never believe where precipitation is falling past really 120 hours out on the model. It's going to completely change. But I am buying this kind of troughing out east ridging out west so the pattern could support like i said some flakes flying in the south maybe a little bit of snow along the coast all right let's move into later next week now we're kind of getting towards la la land the reason why i'm taking this somewhat seriously is all of our ensembles see a very negative epo large alaskan ridge building up 
as we get into next week. We also see some cold anomalies in Europe over the next 10 days, which typically leads to a, some say five to 10 day lag of cold air into the States. There's a lot of things happening in the atmosphere right now. And with the models that are increasing my confidence, getting into late next week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you can see our polar jet digging very, very, very far south. And you can see we still have that moisture available coming off the Gulf. What happens here? Well, some of that moisture links in with that cold air. And now you've got snow falling through portions of upstate South Carolina, through portions of North Carolina, including Charlotte, Virginia, into the mid-Atlantic. First kind of real Southern type snowstorm here. Tries to go up the coast too for New York City, Philadelphia, maybe even Boston. Now again, 250 hours out. Don't buy this exact storm. I am beginning to buy the pattern though. So we're going to watch this very, very closely. If you're excited for Southern snow, I'm telling you the opportunity is going to be there probably as we get late into next week. You still need a good storm track. You need the cold air and moisture at the same time, not just one or the other. Right now, it's looking good. Things can change though. But again, I will update you every day. This is why I put out videos every day. This is why I live stream every day. And I will tell you my confidence in this pattern is the highest it's been throughout January. January has been tough to forecast. But again, I like the consensus we're seeing with our ensembles. I like the cold air in Europe. And I like what that can lead to in the States during this time frame. Let's quickly take a look at the GFS. In the short term, not much of a difference. We know what's happening as we get into Thursday, Friday. Some snow through the plains, upper Midwest. Some severe weather Thursday to Saturday. Again, Southern Plains, Dixie Alley, Ohio Valley. I want to push out towards here on the GFS and show you what's happening because here we go getting into the 15th and 16th and again i always talk about the 540 line look at this freezing air driving into the gulf and look at the moisture available here okay this would be about seven or eight days out still outside of forecasting range but we see models agreeing on this type of pattern like i said so is it going to happen like this no could something like this occur though yes next thursday next friday we get a very nice negatively tilted trough this right here is not a snowstorm this right here is a blizzard very negatively tilted trough strong winds this is potentially a major major nor'easter again outside of forecasting range i don't buy at all that this is exactly what we're going to see but you can see comparing and contrasting the european and the gfs they both like that cold air digging towards the gulf they both like an active subtropical jet. They both like the moisture available. So I'm hoping for you guys in the South, hoping for you guys in the mid-Atlantic New England coast who've been waiting for that return of the almighty nor'easter that maybe you get an opportunity here. The pattern looks good, but you still need a little bit of luck with these storm tracks. So I'll continue to watch it. I'll continue to update you, but the GFS is super aggressive with that. And you can see what happens right behind it too. We get even more snow trying to dig into the South, this time in the Southern Plains towards Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, maybe some into Missouri. This is really far out again in the model run. So we're not gonna look too much into the end of this model run. But anyways, very interesting and exciting pattern ahead potentially. Just for fun, do not take the snow map seriously. If you wanna take a look at what the GFS thinks could happen with snowfall over the next 10 to 14 days, obviously it absolutely buries everyone in the northeast puts a little bit of snow down there into the carolinas as well and then you get a lot of snow out here through the central and southern plains we're going to see things develop and change but hey like i said i like the trends you can also see what the euro does some mid-atlantic snow some snow through upstate south carolina through north carolina into virginia baltimore dc so exciting look from the euro again take this with a huge grain of salt all right let's get into our temperature anomalies we're warm coast to coast over the next couple of days we start getting some moisture moving into the west and that warm air begins to move out to the east throughout the rest of the week throughout the weekend we stay warm out east we get a little bit of relief as we get into sunday and into monday out east you can see that we still have a lot of warm or above average air up here through portions of the northern rockies northern plains as we push through next week we'll get a little bit more warm air pushing into the east obviously we're staying warm out west and here comes some significant troughing in the east and this is what could lead to a little bit of snow out here in this region so we're going to watch this closely some more snow potentially across the great lakes region getting into next weekend this would actually be really really crazy just because on average in the northern hemisphere i say it all the time january 20th right around that date is the coldest day of the year if we were to see a significant cool down significant below average temperature anomalies january 18th january 19th 20th records could definitely be set some people could definitely see some record setting cold here and that's what gives you the opportunity to get snow far into the south as i've said many times so the timing is pretty nice right now before i forgot i did quickly want to go over the snow expectations for the next four to five days across the central u.s here again i'm not seeing anyone getting a ton of snow but i'm seeing a lot of people get a little bit of snow you can see through nebraska through kansas central to northern missouri iowa minnesota wisconsin central to northern illinois indiana michigan we have a lot of people getting snow from these back-to-back -back snow systems moving through here not seeing really any major snow totals maybe central to northern wisconsin and portions of 
northern and western Michigan overperform. I do think that's a possibility. All right, we need to talk severe weather. We have a marginal risk for severe weather today through portions of Oklahoma and Texas. Tulsa is almost included there. I'd include Tulsa, Oklahoma City, just to the east of Lubbock. Then you can see through portions of north central Texas. This is mainly for wind and hail. You can see hail outlook, wind outlook. We do not have a tornado risk zone today. Not impossible to get a spin up though. Getting into our day two or our severe weather chances tomorrow, large marginal risk. Now we're including portions of Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana. You can see this has shifted out to the east. Arkansas, of course. This does come with a 2% risk for tornadoes, 2% risk for wind, 2% risk for hail. So tomorrow the severe weather starts to look a little bit more dicey. And then I got to zoom way out as we get into Friday. Large marginal risk stretching through portions of the Southern Plains through Dixie Alley up towards the Ohio Valley. Valley. You can see we have a slight risk in here as well, encompassing portions of Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Arkansas. Now, we do not have our tornado, wind, and hail risk zones for this yet. We will tomorrow, but I'm telling you, this is the day I'm concerned about tornadoes. Here we go as we push through Wednesday. You can see some of these cells beginning to fire off through Oklahoma, portions of north central Texas. Again, wind and hail threat, not too concerned about tornadoes yet with that event. Now, as we get into Thursday, as you can see right here, getting into Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening, we start to get some discrete cells popping up in a little bit of a QLCS trying to form here, quasi-linear convective system, meaning we could have a powerful line of storms or squall line forming. And a lot of times you can see rotation along these lines. So spin-ups, definitely possible. Southeastern Missouri, I think Arkansas, into portions of Texas, eastern Oklahoma, maybe northern Louisiana. You can see where the squall line is beginning to form. You can see where these cells are forming as well. And if we take a look at our SIG tour as we get into Thursday, there it is. This is our significant tornado parameter, and you can see where it's popping up here. This is where the Rufus thinks we could have an issue and we could see some spin-ups here. You need instability in this region. You're going to have some, not a ton. I, I think that's the one thing that could keep some of these storms from really, really firing off and being super intense is the lack of super high instability. But again, this stuff changes quickly. And I think as we get into Friday, that instability will really show up. Here we go. As we get into Friday, you can see that line moving off into the east and it really begins to intensify. Again, I think our instability, our Cape numbers begin to grow. And you can see through portions of really central Kentucky down through central to west. Western Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Mississippi, central to northern Mississippi, all the way stretching down into southeastern Texas and through portions of Louisiana, we could have some serious cells moving through. We could have a strong QLCS moving through. We could get spin-ups, large hail, damaging winds. We need to pay attention as we get into Friday. Unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town Thursday to Sunday. I'm still going to try to cover portions of this and give you guys updates, but definitely take all these days seriously, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but especially Friday, we could definitely get some tornadoes on the ground here. So watch that closely. And also take a look at our day three excessive rainfall outlook. This includes a lot of states, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, the surrounding states. We could see a lot of rainfall here. Flash flooding could be an issue as we push through Friday. Last thing I wanted to point out to you is we still see on all of our ensembles this major negative EPO developing as we get towards the 17th and 18th. You can see it here on our European weeklies. You can see it here on our Euro AI as we get into the 17th and 18th. What is this? Again, strong Alaskan ridge that could disrupt our tropospheric polar vortex, plunging a lot of Arctic air, a lot of below average air into the state second half of January. January. GFS Ensemble, extend it. We see this as well as we get into the 17th, 18th. You can see our mean, our control. They're going south here, negative EPO, big Alaskan Ridge. So continuing to see that. Our MJO looks like it wants to reamplify back up potentially into phase seven, phase eight. This can make things really interesting. Also getting towards the end of January into early February, cold air and moisture for the states, especially in the east. We might want to talk about the MJO a little bit more going forward now that it's deciding it wants to reamplify. So we'll talk about that more in future videos. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. Like I said, if you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I try and upload videos like this every day and live stream every day. I will be out of town Thursday to Monday, but I'll be trying to still go live and give you guys some updates while I'm out of town. If you want to join an awesome weather community, the link to my discord is in the description of all my YouTube videos. It's Connor's Climate Corner HQ. You can join. There's tons of great updates in there and we have a great community. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video or the next live stream.